Bilateral blur was introduced in After Effects CS4. It's an intelligent blur in that it keeps the luminance information and therefore sharpness in the image, but blurs the color information. And you can set a threshold for how much information is retained. It's a little non-intuitive to use. The default settings are a little bit strange. So let's spend a minute, explore it so that you can better understand how to use it. Here's a classic type of image that shows what bilateral blur is good for. I have very sharp objects here in terms of these wood palettes the outlines around the headlights, the wheel wells, etc. But I also have several soft elements like this fog that the car is driving through. I'm going to select Car Through Fog and apply Effect, Blur and Sharpen, Bilateral Blur. Now the first thing that happens is that the image goes somewhat monochromatic. That is the default setting for bilateral blur and probably is not what you want. You almost always want to enable Colorize, which will bring back some of the original color in the image. Now you'll notice that sharp edged objects, like these palettes, the outlines around the headlights, the wheel wells, etc., have remained sharp, but the fog has gotten considerably softer. Off, on. The radius parameter controls just how soft the fog is. As I turn it down, you'll see I'm back to a sharp image. As I turn it back up, I'm selectively softening the indistinct parts of the image while keeping my sharp edges. And the threshold determines where that line is between soft and sharp. If I crank it up, you'll see that far more of the image is soft. If I reduce it down, you'll see that the whole image is sharp again. So it determines that threshold between soft and sharp images. Let's go look at this with a few other images. Here I have a face. And again, this is something where I might want to keep some sharp details like the eyes but soften other details. This is a DNR laced video, so I've got some trouble in the whiskers here. I've got some distracting things happening in the background, etc. So I'll select the lion and apply effect bilateral blur. It was the most recent effect, so it's gonna be at the top of the list. Turn on colorize to get color back at the lion's face. And you see again, I'm keeping some sharpness in the eyes, but I'm softening a lot of things that were happening with the fur and a little bit with what was going on in the background. I can play around with the threshold and how much I'm blurring. This image, I probably want to blur a little bit less, get a little bit more detail back into the face, but I might want to try upping the threshold so I can blur more of the background image, but go ahead and keep features such as the eyes, the mouth, the nostrils, etc. Play around with a higher blur and a lower threshold. Now I've really got a lot more detail in the fur because I've lowered the threshold. I say there's fewer things that I want to blur, but I still have some general softening going on in the image. Let's look at a third example. Here's something that you think bilateral blur might be good at, but I have to give you a cautionary tale. As I zoom in on this woman, you'll see that we've got some problems here in terms of lines around her eyes. We've also got a bit of splotchiness caused by JPEG compression in this image. This is an image where we might say smart blur would be great. We want to keep the details in the eyes and the teeth, but lose the splotchiness and lose the lines. Well, I've worked with this image earlier and I came to determination of the small radius for just slight blurring and a low threshold kind of gave me what I wanted. I'll turn on the effect and you notice my cursor takes a little while to update before this image actually draws. And this is a problem with bilateral blur. The smaller the details you try to make out, the longer it takes to calculate. And even in this case, I've got somewhat what I want. I saw the teeth, I saw the eyes, but the skin has been softened. Go back to 100%. Not too bad. But frankly, it's hard to get this subtle of an image with bilateral blur. If I'm doing this type of image, instead, I'll go use the smart blur effect, which renders a bit faster in these fine details, and it makes it easier for me to maintain details in the face and the eyes and the teeth. Just keep in mind, if this is the type of image you're going after, bilateral blur may not be your best solution. You might look at something else like smart blur. Finally, let's look at a creative application on bilateral blur. We've created entire training modules in what we call the Filmic Glow technique. And the Filmic Glow is based on the idea of duplicating your footage, applying some sort of blur effect to a copy of your footage. I'm gonna turn Colorize back on. Then using a blend mode to mix that colorized version back on top of the original. And as a result, you get more intense colors, but you also get a bit of softening around the edges, a bit of a gentle blooming, like slightly overexposed film. Here you can go ahead and crank up the radius and really get some nice blooming and softening. Just to show you, this is without and with. 
You see, it really helps get rid of some of the film grain that's in this footage and creates a nice filmic glow to the overall result. So that's a nice creative application for bilateral blur. So to summarize, bilateral blur tries to keep details while blurring soft areas in between those details. It's not so good when you're going for realistic things, such as just improving the look of someone's face, but it is good at impressionistic imagery or creating special effects such as a filmic glow sort of treatment.